okay today we'll be discussing about email action in splunk alert okay so if you remember from my previous video we talked about schedule alert right and if i just recap so we had let me go to settings and alerts for tmdb app we had two alerts right error generating alert one and error generating alert two which was generating that error events right now i'll just enable it now so that it will start generating the error events and we also had another alert called demo alert it, it was a schedule alert it was running the search on internal index and it was looking for only splunk d log right for the last five minutes and it was also using a regular expression to create an extra field called mail underscore id right and this particular schedule alert was running every five minutes right with the all time time window and whenever my results number of results are greater than two it was alerting that one and while discussing that schedule alert we also talked about that throttling part in detail right so and the schedule alert action we added as a as a add to trigger alerts now in this particular video we'll be talking about the email actions send email okay now before i do that okay let me show you one thing over here now if you see it over here whatever the alert actions we are seeing it over here right if you are in splunk admin you can configure it from here go to settings alert actions okay now if you see it is listing up the same set of alerts we are seeing it over there right now from here you can enable disable some of the actions even like in future videos we'll be talking about the custom alert actions we can create for our own okay so how to create and that will be uh, displayed over here as well and from there also it will be we can enable disable it and change its permission those type of things we can do okay now for email action there are specific privileges as required okay now if i just go to settings access control now currently i am logged in to my splunk deployment as an administrator so if i just go to roles and admin role okay so admin role have this capability so if i just go by the capabilities there is a capability called list underscore settings okay so a user only can send an email through an alert only if he has he or she has a list underscore settings role or the capabilities assigned to his role okay so you have to remember that now by default admin has that i think admin and splunk system role has and the candidate role has that particular privileges so i am not setting it up now okay but you have to remember this one so if you if you are using some other users apart from other if you are using some users which have roles apart from this roles so you have to specifically assign that list underscore settings role to that particular user okay now i am going to my splunk enterprise so before i before i um add that email action to my alert okay first thing we need to do is we need to set up the email server okay email details so for that we need to go to settings server settings okay and we need to go to email settings over here now for this video what i have done is i created a dummy email id gmail id called splunk.ml1234 at the gmail.com okay so we will be using this particular gmail id to do everything okay now to configure gmail what you need to do is in the mail host we have to give smtp.gmail.com colon 587 now this is this is true and this is fixed for any any gmail ids okay and the email security you have to select enable tls okay now the username we have i'll be giving this user dummy user we have created okay 
at the rate gmail dot com. Okay, now the password you have to give. I'll recommend you to, you to create your own Gmail ID and test it out. Okay, now link host name basically it is the set a host name for generating URLs for the outgoing notifications. That means if you want to just don't do not want to expose your actual host name and you want to give some host name you can configure it over here now send email as you have to give splunk you can give anything over here and this will be the email footer okay now for pdf reporting report settings if you want to send some pdf report through email so these settings will be applicable over there here you can select the paper size orientation okay even you can create a logo and May print that logo in your PDF file. Okay. Now for PDF footer, where you can place your logo, title, and the right side, what will be there? Everything you can configure over here for footer as well as header. Okay. So now for PDF, I'll be keeping the default settings here as well. Okay. So now we'll click on save over here. Okay. So we have configured our email settings. Now for Gmail to work with this particular settings, you need to turn off, turn on these things. Okay. Now you need to go to your Google account. Okay. You need to go to security. If you just come down over there. Okay. So there is a option called list, less secure app access. You need to turn it on. Okay. Otherwise you won't be able to send any email. Okay. Now this thing you have to remember. Now, if I just go to my Gmail, okay, so I'm in Gmail now. Now, what we'll do, we will go to our settings and we will go to our demo alert, okay. We'll select the search app from here. We'll click on, currently the demo alert in, is in disabled mode, okay. We'll click on over here, okay. First, we'll configure it. So, let it be schedule alert only. I'll run it every two minutes or three minutes, let's say. Okay. Now I'll be keeping this alert condition as it is. Okay. Now first we will trigger it once. Now this time we'll try to see uh, what is the difference between a triggering for once and for each result. Okay. Now for simplicity purpose, I will disable the throttling now. Okay. I will remove this add to alert trigger action. Okay. I'll be adding an email action, send an email. Okay. Now, if you see, you can send an, from send an email, there are a lot of options are available over here, right? You can give any email address to send. Okay. So I'll be giving this plunk.ml1234 at the rate gmail.com itself. Okay. And you can give comma separated list as well. Okay. To give multiple email IDs over here. Now, if you see over here, so CC and BCC, if you just add it over here, you can add the email IDs for CC and BCC as well. Okay. Priority you can give, let's say give, let's give hi. Now, if you see subject, this will be the email subject and the email message over here, right? Now, before we, I discuss this two, let's discuss about these guys. If you see, there are a lot of include apps options over here, right? Now, if I just check all of it what does this means that means the email will have a link to this alert that means when the email will be triggered in that email there will be a link to see the alert result okay even there will be a link for alert results as well there will be a, a search string included in the email there will be inline table which will basically show you the result whatever the search result we have it this particular search result we have it it will include that one as well as in as an in inline table as a csv file as a pdf file okay it will also include that trigger condition it will also include the trigger time and the type of email also you can choose it over here either html or plain text or normal plain text now for this particular demo i will be choosing the html and plain text itself now for email subject and email message if you see there are a lot of tokens we we are using it over here right so in splunk alert and the email alert actions you can use lot of tokens okay if i just go to the documentation now what kind of token we can use 
now if you see it here there are five to six categories basically over here like search metadata search result job information server information and the dashboard information now for splunk alert dashboard related nothing you can access dashboard related tokens okay now dashboard related tokens only available when you are sending email from through scheduled pdf delivery okay now for search metadata these are the tokens you can access now this kind of tokens are uh, the similar kind of tokens if i just go to my splunk home okay etc apps if i just go to my search app okay now if i just go to my local this is the safe search.conf uh, it, it created right for 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 the demo alert right now each and every each and every settings you can access through token okay so this is what it has been mentioned over here name means it is the demo search name that means this this particular this particular stanza name you can access okay now there are a lot of other options like what is the cron schedule what is the description what is the app name everything you can access it now for the results related token whatever the search result is there right you can access the result field name as well by like this token result dot field name okay now job related tokens like earliest time if you remember like whenever we run a search in splunk right it creates a job behind the scene now that that particular job has lot of informations like lot of features like like earliest time events search latest time result count you can access those kind of tokens as well over here okay now for server related token it will be like server build server name server version you can access it over here now as we cannot access any dashboard metadata related information so we will not be discussing those things as well okay now so that if you see like there are a lot of tokens you can access now based on your use case you can apply those kind of tokens over here now for simplicity purpose we'll just keep the name of name token that means the particular search name the stanza name basically basically it, it will be giving you the demo alert this particular name over here okay now after all of these settings i will be clicking on save okay i'll be clicking on done over here now what i will do is i will enable this particular alert okay so the current time is 11:42 the next schedule time is 11:45 now if i just try to run the search let me say for last five minutes we have rows right we have nine events it's cool so we'll wait for another three minutes then we'll come back and see whether the alerts will be alerts is triggered or not and how it is triggered now remember we are doing it for once okay that means whatever the number of result be the alert should be sending a single email to me okay we'll see that one we'll come back on 11:45 okay our current time is 11:45 okay let us see whether the alert has been triggered or not okay the alert has been triggered over here it picked up eight events total okay and if i just check my email it it sent me one email right now if i just click on this email let us see what are the information it has sent first thing is if you see the subject line over here right so it is sending splunk alert then the alert name right so it's a demo alert it has sent right now if you see there is a link for the alert right so if i just click on over here it should take me to my splunk deployment okay my splunk home page to give information about the alert okay now if you see it included a search string as well which search string basically used in this particular demo alert what is the trigger condition correct what is the triggering time and now if you see it created it it's basically listed down all this eight events in a single email okay and it fired only once and if i just show you over here the csv attachment 
all the eight events are stored as a single csv file over here and if i just show you the pdf attachment as well similar kind of information they have given over here right so whatever the checkbox we have checked it over here every information it has given me in an email but it with a single email now okay now let us change to the for each result okay and see what is the behavior change is happening over there okay now i'll be clicking on save over there done so my next schedule time is on 11:48 okay now for to make it very simplistic i will be deleting this email so that we'll just we can count how many emails is getting triggered now okay so so we'll be coming on 11:48 after one minute let's see okay currently it is 11:48 now let us see uh, whether our alert has been triggered or not okay the alert has been triggered over here there are six event it has picked up okay so ideally now as our alert trigger type is for each result i should be getting six email over here if you see it started sending me all the emails right and if you if you just count it one two three four five six it exactly triggered six email over here okay now each and every email will be having all those each and every rows now if you see the difference over here it is sending me one by one row and same information will be present in this csv file now it's a single row and as well as the pdf file the pdf file will be having i think the full content over here okay but rest of the stuff if you see for each and every each and every event it is sending me single single email okay so this is the difference between an alert which is triggering for once and for each result that's why this throttling feature comes into in picture right because if i just already alerted it once it will it should not and if i just don't want to alert it again and again i i should be throttling it and which we discussed in very detail in in my schedule alert video right so similar kind of concept it will be happening over here as well so we'll not go through that one okay so this is how we can configure email alert action in splunk okay now one thing we need to uh, keep in mind that it may happen that uh, the the csv file you are generating over here it could be a very bigger in size let's say uh, more than allowable range for a particular email system okay so in that case maybe let's say 30 mb uh, or 40 mb so in that case there is no way you can uh, zip it and then send it to it there is no default way like out of the box way so in that case you we may need to uh, write some kind of custom script which will be basically uh, uh, zip that particular file and sending that email we cannot use the splunk default email triggering action over there in that case maybe when i'll be discussing the custom uh, alert triggering one right that could be the one which we should be using over there so we need to keep it keep in mind that one that means the whatever csv file you are generating it should be the allowable limit within the uh, within the email exchange system okay so another thing i just wanted to discuss in our um, server setting email settings so if you want to uh, configure any other email you need to configure it correspondingly like for i i have done it for only for gmail for other uh, kind of suppose microsoft exchange you need to know the host name which we, we can get from the exchange admin and all and accordingly you need to select the email security generally it will be ssl only and the user name and password okay hopefully that that is intuitive enough okay so this is what i wanted to discuss over here in the, as a email as an email action for splunk alerts now this is true for um, real time alerts as well okay now in the next video we'll be talking about the webhook email webhook action for splunk alerts okay see you in next video